G'day guys and welcome to this episode of Ask Jack D and Ask Gary V where two worlds are colliding. We are with the man himself over in New York as we speak. Uh, for those of you that don't know Gary, he's, um, he's a legend of an entrepreneur. Straight out of college, built, uh, took his family business from 3 million to 60 million. Um, in 2009, he started VaynerMedia to help big businesses embrace digital. He's now got over 600 staff in that particular business. He's an investor in many legendary tech companies, including Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, uh, the list goes on, as well as being host of the Ask Gary V Show, which is very well known globally at the moment. So Gary, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for the uh, lovely intro. No worries at all. Now, Gary, uh, all of my community have been begging me that this episode and this show could start with you, with your famous line. So I think, we've, I think we better yes. give them that. Let's do it. Let's get into the show. <laughs> there we go. Um, so Gary, let's get in. You know, but before we start, you talk a lot about uh, hustle and the need to work, you know, incredibly hard. Talk to us about what hustle means for you and how you balance hustle with strategy, given that you're now overseeing an organization with over 600 staff. Well, you know, to me, those are not competing thoughts, right? Meaning hustle is work ethic. It's just grinding. It's recognizing that you could be the smartest of all time, but if you don't put in the hours, like, you're just not going to win. Like, I really equate it to athletics. You know, I think a lot of people, um, you know, are born with more talent, but when you look at the best players in the world, whether soccer or rugby or American football or whatever your sport of choice is, um, oftentimes it's the people who have the right mix between hard work and skill. Um, I don't think you can just have back to strategy and hustle. If your strategy is wrong, if you're working 18 hours a day in the wrong way, you're gonna lose. But at the same token, if you're working four hours a day in the right way, and somebody's working 13 hours a day in a slightly less right way, they're probably gonna beat you. So to me, they're not exclusive. You need both. They're the two core pillars. Working hard and smart, yes. If you do both, you win more than somebody who's doing one of the two. I just feel that hustle's more controllable. Like, and maybe you're born with work ethic, which I believe, but I think it's, you know, if I said to you, Jack, be smarter, what the hell do you do about that? <laughs> Particularly in my case, right, it's not easy. So, but, but if I tell you like work more, it's actually very consumable. You're like, yeah, if I don't go to the pub at five every day or if I don't play video games for two hours a day or if I don't watch House of Cards for three hours a day or, you know, like, like you know, it, it, it's just very tangible and understanding. And so to me, I'm always playing on the more practical of things. So that's, uh, that's where we're at. And Gary, how do you balance that? Because you produce an incredible amount of content. How do you, um, you know, like if you were to break down how you spend your time, what are the sort of macro priorities that you're working on in any given day or given I'm, week? I'm 90% I'm CEO of VaynerMedia. Um, you know, okay. the fund that I run has deployed most of its capital. I am raising more capital for another fund and so those percentages will change. I'm probably spending 10% yeah. of my time on brand Gary between doing the show um, or speaking and things of that nature. Um, doing stuff like this for 15 minutes, it all eats away. But uh, right now I'm pretty much operating the agency, um, uh, the consultancy firm and that, that's what I spend my time on. Yeah, yeah. One thing you've spoken about being even more important than hustle is self-awareness, which is a view that I very much share. Talk to us about what you mean around that. If you don't know yourself, you're finished. I, I truly believe that. You are limiting your upside. And so if you're not able to accept your truths, what you're good at, what you're bad at, um, you can't lay out a smart strategy of what to spend your time on. I think one of the things that I do well is I've recognized what I'm good at and I try to spend as much time on those things as possible, selling, building my brand, which is a proxy to my other opportunities, uh, HR, people skills, um, and I try to leave other things to AJ, my brother, or my CFO, or my CIO. Like, I let other major players play on those things. I, I mean, I assume that I can record video, but like, DRock right now is recording B-roll, right? And so like, like, I guess I could do that. There we go, I see it, there we go. So, you know, I guess I could do it, 
But DRock's way better at editing than I am. Like I could watch YouTube videos and read blog posts and spend the year right now to become a great editor. I think I have a good eye for things, especially my brand. Like DRock will tell you I'm good at knowing when my stuff's gonna work well because I know my audience, so I could edit towards that and probably have a high success rate. But DRock's better at it than me. Like I, I feel like he would be naturally even better at it than I would. I don't even know what my natural ability is, but like I can pretty much tell. It, that he's better at it and so that and he's got more passion for it and he understands the game and so people just try to like do too many things that they're not great at. Um, you become tone deaf to other people, to other projects um, and so self-awareness matters. Know who you are, triple down on what you're good at, make that your life uh, and let the other, and punt the other things. Yeah, beautiful. And mate, you, you've demonstrated several times now that you understand very well how to build a structurally sound business very quickly. How does your sort of executive team or leadership team look like? Um, and, and how do you decide how sort of deep down into the detail you go versus delegating you know, departments to, to your execs? So I have a CFO, I have a CIO who's been in the agency world, chief integration officer, but it's more of a COO role, though AJ holds that title. We probably have two COOs that way. Um, uh, you know, I have an executive creative director, I have department heads, Jeff Nicholson just walked by me, he runs paid media. We have the same for every discipline, including video and all these things. We have heads of offices in San Francisco, Tennessee, and LA. So I have you know, 20, 30 direct reports. Um, I dig deep into the things I'm good at, like sales. So Ari, who runs new business, I'm probably deeper involved in that than, than uh, maybe probably even wants. Same with HR, mini, I get involved in that. So back to the prior question. And then I get deep when I think somebody either needs my help or is not doing a good job. So I'm, in the, I'm a firefighter, right? I'm in the putting fires out business. So I sit back and wherever the energy is needed, whether it's the LA office or the Tennessee office or the San Francisco office or the paid department or the video department or HR or, or the SVPs that run this piece of business, whatever's on fire, that's really where I'm normally gonna be. Yeah, yeah. And how have you found in terms of bringing on execs in different, so a CIO or whoever, it obviously should be more competent than you in that particular skill. How do you lead that person? Well, I'm a much better executive than any of those people. Like, I firmly believe that. Like, you may know more about video, but I know way more about making money. That's why you work for me. And we're a business, so that's the only score. And by the way, making more money is treating people well, coming up with strategies of what to sell, uh, knowing what they do when somebody's a problem, both a client or a employee. So I'm a better executive than everybody that works for me, otherwise they shouldn't work for me, right? So. I'm able to lead them very easily because they may be better at the craft of doing things, but as a manager, nobody's better. Um, and as a salesperson, nobody's better. Uh, and so I've got, a lot of, uh, I've got a lot of leverage with them because I mean, they work for me because they're learning so much from me. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, <laughs> mate, <laughs> cool. one thing we're both very passionate about is uh, the ineffectiveness of particularly higher education, particularly when talking about business or entrepreneurial education. What do you think needs to happen? So here at the Entourage, we're an education institution. We've got you know, 70 staff. We you know, offer diplomas. Uh, in a couple of years, we'll be a higher education provider. We've got a community of about 180,000 you know, business owners around the world. Um, so we're trying to do something about improving higher education, particularly for business owners. Um, what do you think needs to happen in higher ed to improve the learning experience for students? Well, I think using technology is smart, right? Like making it consumable, things of that nature. But I think the higher ed issue that I have is more predicated on does it prepare you to be successful in the game that you're gonna play? So if you have to get a lawyer, degree, if you have to go through legal law school because that's the only way to get a legal license in states to then be a lawyer, of course that makes sense. The, my problem with entrepreneurship is it's not a proxy. Like, not everybody that goes to Babson creates a successful business. And stunningly, a lot of people that don't go to college at all start enormously big businesses. And college, in America at least, is something you can't even declare bankruptcy out of. So you have people taking $300,000 in debt to go to business school and that 
to be an entrepreneur. Forget about business school to go be a consultant or business school to get a job at a Fortune 500 company. No, like to become an entrepreneur, I just don't believe in that. I mean, we do not go to singing school and we do not go to basketball school. We go to camps, we go to you know things of that nature and I think for entrepreneurship it needs to map other skill-based activities. You know, I think entrepreneurship should start happening at five, six, seven, eight, nine years old. Like you should go to sleepaway camp where you gotta learn how to sell shit. Uh, you know, like, like that's, that I think, I think entrepreneurship is way more of a natural skill that you can hone over time uh, through practice, not through reading about case studies of me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gary, do you, do you know, my view around teaching entrepreneurship is that there's characteristics that the individual has to bring, you know, uh, hard work, comfortable being uncomfortable, risk taker, that, that sort of stuff. But that's not teachable. No, it's not, but the skill set around product to market fit, marketing, how to develop a sales model, how to raise money from investors, the skill set component is relatively teachable, wouldn't you think? Yes, but I, th- I also think it's commoditized and I do think people should pay for it, but they shouldn't pay $50,000 a semester and number two, it's fucking commoditized. Like, you can learn how to raise money and run a P&L and go by the book, but it's all the invisible skills that make entrepreneurs win. Yeah, agree. It's just it. 100%. It's just it. Like I can learn the fundamentals of dribbling, how to take a proper jump shot, but it's not that part. Yeah. And that, that, that's the, fund, the fundamental key, I think, in educating uh, people who want to go into business. How do you train thinking and how do you train creativity? You got two minutes? I got three minutes. Three, oh, minutes. three minutes, awesome. Um, mate, who do you go to for advice? Nobody. Talk to us about that. It's fucking lonely. <laughs> Have you got a board, mentors, advice? You know, I know you've got you know, some, some sort of high profile friends. I don't see this, in, uh, I want everybody who's watching or listening to this to understand, this is a flaw of mine. This is where my ego got in my way and is an absolute limiter to my success. I just can't break the gear though. I'm very inside of myself. Um, my parents have done their job in raising me as a quality human being. I live in the environment. I'm not capable of, because of my own ego, this is just the God honest truth, to go to somebody and say, give me advice in this thing that I believe that I know how to do for me. Because I think, the, it's why I don't even love giving advice for all the Ask Gary Vee show, for this interview, for my talking, for my books. I have a weird relationship with me as somebody who gives advice because I would never take it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm a contradiction that way. You could almost call me, you know, like, it's, it's, it might even be not, like, it's almost like inappropriate, but I think, I think that I want to give you the truth. I, yeah. The truth is, I don't go anywhere. Like, I go very inside of myself. I mean, Steve Ross is my business partner. He's worth $7 billion. He bought the Miami Dolphins. He's the most successful real estate mogul of a generation. Uh, I never ask him for advice. As a matter of fact, we had dinner, he like, drilled me on it. He's like, I don't understand, like, like everybody comes and hits me up. I'm like, I'm like, sorry man, like I'm just not interested. Like I just don't want it. Like and again, I the reason I'm saying this out loud is most people who are consuming this probably don't know me well enough to know that I'm saying this only because I want to give good advice. It is not smart to do how I'm doing it. It's just right for me. I don't know yeah. what else to tell you. And is that a byproduct of self belief in your instance, do you think? Yes, I think it's disproportional self it's delusional self confidence. Yeah. Which is, yeah, which I think is necessary. I think so. I mean, I, I'm not comfortable at this point in my career of, uh, of uh, breaking my process. I'm too happy and I'm successful enough that I'm scared to introduce something that, I could never imagine taking somebody's advice, it failing and me living with that. It's inconceivable for me. Yeah, yeah. I would also not take the advice. Yeah. And if we would go back to the day before you jumped into your family business, so the day before you started your business career, what, was the, what would be the number one piece of advice you'd give your younger self? Dude, you know how you're like hooking up with this chick right now and like it's all college and it's so great? Like you should do that on the weekends and vacations for the first five years of working instead of never ever doing anything fun again. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, I appreciate your time, brother. It was brilliant to talk to you. And uh, hopefully we see you when you come out in March. Appreciate it, brother. Thanks for uh, respecting the time. I really, that meant a lot to me, what you just did there. Thank Not you. a problem, mate. Cheers. Ciao.